Thanks for watching this Indigo for Revit introduction video. We'll use the basic example that ships with Revit 2011. Let's add a new 3D camera to render from and point it towards the building. We switch to a non-perspective view so that Revit enables the add-ins. From the add-ins menu in the Indigo Renderer camera settings, we select the newly created 3D view. In the output settings, we'll specify the screen resolution directly. If we hit the Render with Indigo button, it does a brief export process and the scene begins rendering. Rendering happens within Indigo Renderer, which is a standalone application that renders as a background task, allowing you to continue working in Revit and generally use your computer while the image is resolving. In the beginning, you'll see a grainy image, which is progressively refined to produce a clean result. The rendering process is much like normal photography in that a virtual camera is placed inside the scene and simulated photons will strike its sensor to produce the image. During rendering, you can experiment with different tone mapping options, which control how the final RGB image is produced from the physical light units. Next, we'll look at how to use indigo materials. First, select an element. We'll choose this building facade, for example. Under the add-ins toolbar in Material Inspector, you'll find the materials for the element you selected. We're going to add an image map to this element, so let's browse for an image to use. We've got some texture and bump maps ready to go, so we'll choose these. We set the bump size to 9mm, the map sizes to be 5m, and tweak the physical properties to correspond to a wood material, which can have a glossy sheen. While we're in the material editor, let's get the site's grass looking a little more natural with a tweaked grass material. Instead of just being solid green, we can use a tiling grass image map. This one tiles after 4 meters. We'll also quickly tweak the concrete material as we have some image and bump maps for this. Now it's time to address the lighting, so let's go to this 3D View's properties. In the renderer settings, there are options for lighting schemes. We'll adjust the sun and sky settings to select the single time and place from which the daylight settings will be derived. Weather conditions are not taken into account, so even though we're using Wellington, New Zealand as an example, we'll still get a beautiful clear blue sky in the render. Having clear blue skies in Wellington can break the suspension of disbelief Indigo aims to achieve, so let's choose one that more accurately represents the local weather conditions. We've downloaded an EXR environment map from Paul Debevec, which we select as the only environment lighting. The map's color temperature, luminance scaling, and rotation can be adjusted here, but we'll stick with the defaults for now. That looks a lot more like the view outside, so let's let it converge a little. Skipping ahead to three minutes, you can see the image is already quite clean. 